Hello, networkers. My name is Michael Tomatis with the Route Hub Training Program. And over a year ago, we released our Cisco Configuration Reference Guide, and we have released many updates to this popular training document that many of our own training customers are using for their own deployments and reference when needed. So we have updated this video preview of this document. This document allows you to reference hundreds of quick sample Cisco configuration for many services and solutions in one comprehensive guide. This is probably the largest collaboration of any CLI configuration in one place ever released on the internet. Our packages and our collection focus on the details, design, and further explanation of the configuration. But the reference guide provides a quick method to access configuration to apply and use when needed. This is what we reference for many of our own configurations of client projects today. Let's give you a preview on what you can expect in this reference guide, including how the structure works. The configuration reference guide is broken down into various categories to organize the configuration. You can view this by first looking at the table of contents to see some of these categories. They include core network services, security, tunneling services, and a lot more. And under those categories, you will see subtopics like IP routing, LAN switching, multicast, and others here. But the best way to browse through the various configuration and topics is by using the bookmarks that's located here on the left. When you click here, you see the same kind of view, but it allows you to expand and collapse where needed. And that can allow you to go through any configuration that you're looking for and to reference the bookmarks and to go to a new section of your choice. So let's go through a couple examples. Let's say that we want to see configuration samples for EIGRP routing. To do that, we can expand core network services, go to IP routing and expand that, and we see some of the routing protocols like OSPF, EIGRP, and BGP. So for EIGRP, we can expand this out and see all topics related to configuring EIGRP. That can include basic EIGRP routing, configuring passive interfaces, to configuring neighbor timers to MD5 authentication. Let's say that you want to know the syntax for configuring EIGRP very quickly. To do that, we can go to EIGRP routing, click there, and it will send us to a particular module, which is right here. Let's go ahead and expand this, or collapse it, and let's explain what the structure looks like for these little modules. Now, for each configuration topic that is in the configuration reference guide, it will be present within this module here. So first you see something like the title of EIGRP routing. That is referenced here within all these different topics. Then you see the actual syntax that is needed for configuring EIGRP routing. You also notice comments added to help explain some of the syntax in the configuration as shown. Now some modules will have a network diagram like shown here to help explain the configuration a little bit better. So you may need to configure EIGP routing. So you can go to this section, you know what the syntax is by referencing this example, and then from there you're finished. But let's say that you already have EIGP configured, and you may need to, let's say, configure MD5 authentication. And you want to know what is that syntax very quickly to reference. To do that, we can simply just go to the topic that we are interested in, like MD5 authentication. So doing that will lead us to that configuration a sample configuration that we can then apply, we can use the comments to help us out, that we can then configure onto our network. So these modules are very specific to showing you exact configuration syntax that is needed as a quick, easy reference. And again, some will actually have diagrams, others will not. Let's try another example. So we can go back to our bookmarks and let's collapse IP routing. Let's check out something for LAN switching. So here we can say, what is the configuration for, let's say, doing port monitoring? So I can go here and I can see the syntax for configuring port monitor and even remote span for doing remote port monitoring. I see a network diagram I can reference, followed by the configuration I can use to configure that onto my network. And I can see other topics like storm control configuration, UDOD, even port security. So you can see all these other configurations as well. You'll also notice in the reference guide that we will provide configuration between, let's say, different vendors. Like, let's say you have two switches, Cisco and a Netgear switch. 
that's going to do a layer two per channel and this provides an example. So this just shows the syntax on the Cisco side and even the configuration on the Netgear side. So you see a lot of that in this reference guide. Let's do another example. So other examples, let's go ahead and close this up and you see very similar things for doing a multicast, very similar details there. Or for IPv6, you see very similar details for doing that kind of configuration. And you see other configuration for security. So we can do like firewall configuration that includes ACLs, like how do you configure a time-based ACL? Here's a syntax and an example for how that works. How do you configure black hole null routing? Here's an example for how to do that. Other examples for configuring, let's say reflective ACLs or context-based access controls, which does more stateful firewalls. You can see examples for that configuration and again, a network diagram to help you that will be referenced with those configuration modules. We also have like VPN configurations, like for IPsec, DM VPNs, which is broken down based on a hub configuration or based on a spoke configuration. We also have configurations uh, in terms of VPN for a Get VPN, Easy VPN, SSL VPN, even some legacy VPN technologies like PPTP. You can see configuration like under voice and unified services. So here we can see examples of configuration for configuring Call Manager Express, Unity Express, or even just your voice gateway. Now for Call Manager Express, for example, I can click here, I can see a list of all topics. I can also expand this to see the same thing. Now the great thing about this is I can scroll down, let's close this up here, and we can see like a network diagram that is going to reference for all these different modules. Then from there, I can know about the base configuration that is needed following the network diagram. If I want to set up directory numbers, if I want to do call forward all, how to configure an IP phone, this provides me all of the little syntax that I can use. And again, I can just use the bookmarks and go to where I want to configure. Like maybe I want to configure call part. I click here and there's that configuration for reference. You see configuration for wireless, like for a standalone wireless access point, even switch ports configuration needed if you have a wireless LAN controller and lightweight access points. You see configuration for WAN ports, and these are ports such as how to configure a T1, a DS3, an ATM port, maybe even a frame relay port. This provides all that configuration for easy reference. We also have hardware specific configuration, which is located here. So let's say that you want to find configuration for an ASA, maybe the PIX 500 series, or the Cisco Catalyst 6500, or the 4500, or what is more specific for those models. We have configuration for the Cisco A's appliance, which does load balancing, even the Nexus series, whether it's the 7000 or 5000 series, since they both run the Nexus operating system, or the NX OS. And these are pretty big sections for all of them. Like for the Cisco ASA, if we expand this out, we can see many different topics for different configuration for doing NAT, even doing VPN configuration. Like, let's say we want to do a configuration between an ASA and to another ASA. Here's that configuration. Or about an ASA to a Cisco iOS device. That configuration is listed here as well. So there's a lot of configuration under the ASA that also applies for the PICs and also for the firewall service module. For the Cisco Catalyst 6500, for example, we recently added a configuration for doing VSS. That configuration is also listed here, followed by a network diagram for easy reference. And again, configuration for the ACE series for doing load balancing. Again, you see a nice user-friendly picture and the configuration that is referenced for that picture. And our popular Nexus series. So click here, we have a lot of topics here as well. You see topics for a lot of the configuration of, let's say, doing LAN switching. So a lot of the basic stuff you can see here, including some of the advanced stuff, whether it's like VPC, even fabric extenders for the 5000s connecting to the 2000s. We have those configurations here as well. Another aspect to the reference guide is with templates, base configuration, and solutions. Base configuration is what we do for initial configuration for switches or routers for customers. So let's say that we're configuring a brand new Cisco Catalyst core switch for a customer. 
So the first place that we actually go is to base configuration and we go to Cisco Catalyst switches. From there, it provides a base configuration that has all of the best practices already in place. We simply replace Route Hub with the customer name and we copy and paste this into the switch. We're done. We have the same thing for Cisco routers and even for standalone access points. So it's very, very useful to make deployments go by really fast. We also have templates. And templates is different things that we can apply, let's say, maybe with QoS. So for QoS, let's say that we want to apply a QoS on a WAN router or towards the internet edge. These provide good examples or templates that we can apply onto those devices. And we have solutions and scenarios, and that's listed under templates and base configuration, which is shown here. When I expand this out, this shows the current solution that we have in our reference guide today. And one of the most common ones is the LAN and data center. So expanding this out, you can see different designs that are deployed in data center or LAN campus networks today. So you can see that a campus design could probably be a layer two access with a layer three distributional core or most environments want no layer two or the ability to extend VLANs anywhere on their network. Therefore, you're looking at everything being layer three, the access, core distribution, everything. So let's say that you want to configure this campus design that has layer two access and a layer three core. So I can click here and it will give me a picture followed by that configuration to make this design or to deploy this design within my environment. So it has those type of solutions within this reference guide. Another one very quickly, is that these solutions could also be within these other categories. And a great example of that is under tunneling services. So under layer three VPNs, we have things like MPLS and VRF Lite. So when I click here, I can see an actual picture, an actual diagram of how VRF Lite can be deployed with different VRF domains. And this will show all the configuration from the perspective of configuration as done on the access layer, the distribution, the core, even what we call the zone router, even the firewall between the zone and the core based on this picture that is shown here. So these solutions are not only within this section here under templates and base configuration, they can also be present in the different categories respectively. So this has been a preview of the Cisco Configuration Reference Guide, and you can get more details at routehub.net slash config. Thank you for watching.